Hi, I'm Lindsay Hood and I'm a life and executive coach who specialises in working with amazing women who are secretly struggling with imposter syndrome to help them feel genuinely confident in their unique awesomeness. Today, I want to talk to you about an area I'm really passionate about and that is mindfulness and the relevance of this to our well-being and success. We can also use mindfulness to help build our confidence by being in the moment, so not worrying about the future or the past, and it allows us to just be. So today, I will take you through what mindfulness is and why I think it is important. I will share some ideas and activities you might like to try that may help you get into flow as well as some suggestions for some ways you can use habitual routines and tasks to help you practice mindfulness every day. I'll also link this back to how all of this can help build your confidence. A question that is often asked is how can you be mindful and present whilst also looking to and planning for the future? I am a life coach, I love a good plan, and I have a response to this question which you may find useful. I will also cover the topic of meditation, which is often used synonymously with mindfulness, and why I think a meditation practice may be useful for you. So let's get started, and I'm going to start with a definition of what mindfulness is. And according to the Oxford Dictionary definition, mindfulness is the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. It's a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment or calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts and bodily sensations used as a therapeutic technique. So the key words in this definition for me are conscious, focusing awareness, present moment, calmly acknowledging and accepting. For me, being mindful is about reconnecting our body and our minds. It is about being present in the moment, acknowledging and honouring your thoughts and feelings and giving your full attention to what you are doing. Definition now, but why is mindfulness actually important? In a busy world, our attention is constantly being split as we are told to do more and to go faster. As you are working, you have to be thinking about fulfilling your client's needs, whilst also ensuring you are going to get that urgent task done for your manager, um, who's asked you to get it done by the end of play today. You are juggling project work with daily admin, with monthly tasks, with email demands, as well as needing to find time and energy for your friends and family, as well as your personal development. And let's not forget to throw needing some fun into this mix. Multitasking or flitting between tasks may feel like the only way to keep on top of things, but trying to increase your productivity by multitasking is a myth. Not convinced? Okay, we're going to do a little exercise and what it requires is a stopwatch or timer, a piece of paper and a pen. So when you're ready, start your timer and on the paper, write down on the first line, I am a super genius. And then under it, write down numbers under each of the letters, starting at one and going up to 15. When you've done this, stop the timer taking a note of how long this exercise took you. Now, when you're ready, you'll start the timer again and you will write I with one under it, A with two under it, M with three under it, etc. So you end up with two lines of I am a super genius and one to 15 numbers, but you are alternating between doing the letters and the numbers. When you've done this exercise, stop the timer again and compare how long this took you with your previous attempt. I would wager it took you longer to do the second task, even though the end output was exactly the same. 
remaining focused or mindful on one thing at a time. So in this example, writing the sentence first and then the numbers, it's a better way to boost productivity and complete more tasks successfully in the long term. And this is totally backed by research findings documented by Courtney Ackerman in her article for Positive Psychology on the benefits of mindfulness. Neuroplasticity is the ability our brains have to adapt and change over time. When we work on a task, our brains are actually taking notes. By practicing mindfulness, we are letting our brains process information, acknowledging where we are at a, in any particular time in a non-judgmental way, and we are giving ourselves space to learn. This will help ensure we complete the task more effectively next time, either by making changes or by doing the same thing again if we were successful the first time. We're also signalling to our brain that we want to function mindfully and it starts to work on these changes in our day-to-day -day lives. So any activity that you focus on fully gets you in the zone. Um, and this is really where hours can just slip by and is often an example of a mindful activity. I think these are really important to try to incorporate into your working week to give yourself some time to develop your own mindfulness practice. This is also a great way to build a skill which also then builds self-confidence in your own abilities. We are all totally unique and we all have different activities that support our mindfulness practice or put us into flow. But here are some of my favourites just to get you thinking about this um, and see maybe either things that might work for you or to generate your own ideas. So meditation, and I will be talking about this a lot later on. Um, yoga. When I'm on the mat, I am focusing on my breathing and really feeling into my body as I move through postures and sequences. For me, it is a moving meditation. I love colouring mandalas. Dawn French may say no to adult colouring books, but it is a big yes from me. I love getting engrossed in deciding the colours to use together, ensuring patterns emerge and the concentration of keeping within the lines. Time can just disappear for me with this activity. Something else along the same line for me is writing. So whether it's blogging or writing in my journal, or creating a poem, putting words to paper is something that gets me into flow. When things are becoming too much, I use my journal for a flow of consciousness. So I just write everything and anything that comes into my mind. I don't censor myself. I don't try to make things make sense. I don't care about spelling or grammar. I just let it all come pouring out. I sometimes don't even read over what I've written, but it's just the fact that I get it out of my head so it's no longer taking up that, that headspace. It's like sharing a problem with myself, but I'm not looking for a solution at this time. I'm just looking to get everything out of my head. And once it is, solutions may arise, or I can start to make more sense of my thoughts if I want to. But for me, it really is just letting go. So in contrast to the, the word mind full, I am actually making my mind empty to bring myself back to the present. I also play a musical instrument, I play the violin, and the joy I get from learning a new piece or playing something really familiar is huge, because whilst I'm playing, I can only focus on the notes on the page. Um, so I'm using the music and I'm making my fingers move to, to the right strings and positions to create the correct melody. If I read ahead, I miss the current notes. If I look back, I miss the current notes. The only way I can play what I need to is by focusing on current notes. And the last couple I just want to mention today is walking and running. So I can focus on taking, when I'm doing these activities, what I'm doing is focusing on taking this next step in front of me and focusing on my breathing. I can keep my end goal in mind, so whether that's running five kilometres or doing a big walk in a certain amount of time, but by staying in the present and concentrating what I am doing right at the moment, how my body is feeling and responding, I find I can actually run or walk for longer than when I'm focusing on the future and then maybe anticipating on when I'm going to hit the wall. 
there isn't a right or wrong mindful activity. It's just finding things that mean time disappears for you. It's just finding the things that you love doing just for the sake of doing them. And then finding some time each day or week or month to do them, to make it a priority for you so that you can give yourself the gift of being purposefully mindful. But the great thing about mindfulness is that it can be practiced anywhere. If you focus on the here and now, you let go of any fear, worry or anxiety about the what ifs and concentrate on what you are doing right at the present moment. That is what being mindful is all about. So just finding five minutes at least once, but ideally several times during the day to become fully present and mindful can really help reduce stress, improve your mental health, deepen your self-awareness, as well as increase concentration and general well-being. Okay. All good stuff, hey? So some ideas to try. When you're commuting, focus on commuting. Notice the songs on the radio and appreciate the green traffic lights if you're driving. If you're on the train, notice the faces around you. If you're walking, notice how your heel touches the ground and your foot rolls on the pavement from front to back for you to then push off on the ball of your foot. Notice how your toes are the last part of the foot to leave contact as the heel of the other foot is making contact. Focus on your breathing and the air entering your nostrils, moving down to your diaphragm and rising back up to your nostrils and leaving your body. When you're drinking a cup of tea or coffee, focus on drinking that cup of tea or coffee. Feel the warmth of the cup in your hands. Notice the weight as you lift it to your lips. Feel the liquid entering your mouth. Notice how you swallow. Even when you're watching TV, focus on watching TV. Put down your book, put down your phone, sit in an upright posture, pay attention to what is happening on the screen in front of you. Engage with the dialogue, become immersed in what is going on. And when you're eating, focus on eating. Slow down and experience the texture and taste of the food entering your body. Chew each mouthful thoroughly and notice how tastes evolve and textures change through this process. Only load your next forkful when the current mouthful has been savoured thoroughly and swallowed. I think being mindful is also a great way to build your confidence muscle. Whenever you are being fully present in the moment, whether that is bringing conscious awareness to an everyday task or activity, or losing time by being in flow and doing something you love, your mind is concentrating on what you are doing and it isn't being filled with self-doubt or that constant chatter or, or the voice of your inner critic. A way to build confidence is by taking action. By being fully present, you are focusing on building skills and competence. It is the action of doing and trying that leads to your continuous learning and feelings of confidence in yourself and your abilities will grow as a result. So either from previous knowledge or from what you're learning today, you know the benefits of living in the moment. But what happens when you have to plan for the future? Surely, when you have to be going into the unknown, you can't be present. It took me a really long time to get my head around this one. Being a life coach, I really do encourage people to be looking at plans for their future. But I now believe you can plan in a mindful way. You do this by making the conscious decision that you are spending time on setting goals, planning and moving towards what you want to achieve. It's when you let your mind run to the what-ifs and the anxiety and stress creep in that future planning can become a problem. You're projecting your fear of the unknown and trying to protect yourself from the worst-case scenarios. But you've got to remember, at this point when you're planning, you're just as likely to achieve the best case as the worst case scenarios that your mind's running to. If you start to feel the overwhelm creeping in, name what is happening for you. Maybe you need to tell yourself that you are you know, just worrying. By naming and accepting that and not trying to change how you're feeling at the moment, you are being aware or mindful of what is happening to you. Through this acceptance, it is where you often find you can then just let things go naturally. 
if you try to change it consciously, you need to really focus on how you're feeling that negative or less than useful emotion. And by focusing on it, you become more intent, you're more intently looking at it. So it intensifies the feelings that you are actually desperately trying to change. Instead, though, by acknowledging it, it loosens its power over you. Once you've named it, sit and breathe deeply for a few minutes. See if this helps to remove some of your worry and anxiety. This isn't always easy. And if you are a natural warrior, and I know I am, this can be really hard for you. Um, But something you may always need to be aware of as well about yourself. But this is a really simple strategy in terms of just naming the feeling and sitting with it that can help you be present whilst you're planning for an amazing and successful future state. So what is meditation? For some, meditation is mindfulness. For others, meditation is a religious act. For others, it is just very confusing. Meditation is a way to try to focus your mind to focus your thoughts and to try to quiet the noise that we often have going on in our heads. I believe it is important and an element of successful mindfulness practice. I think it is especially important with the constant interruptions of phone notifications, Facebook likes, emails from clients or your boss at all hours, more content being produced per day than we can consume in our lifetime. It isn't any wonder that our average attention span is now eight seconds or less. And considering a goldfish is is supposedly nine seconds, this really isn't good news for me, as the chances are you have already stopped focusing on this video a while ago now and are probably checking your phone. Meditation is a way to help you get control over your mind. Meditation is about being rather than doing. It is slowing yourself down to be totally present in your body and to not be distracted by anything for a a few minutes. It can be really challenging to begin with as we have trained ourselves to always be checking our phones. That blue notification light is a dopamine hit that gives us a pleasure boost. We've convinced ourselves it's good to be busy, but for our mental and emotional well-being, I think we have to start incorporating ways to take care of ourselves into our everyday lives. Alongside exercise, eating healthily, getting enough sleep and drinking plenty of water, I think meditation is an essential component for us. Something I want to stress though is that it is called a meditation practice for a reason. So some days I can sit or I lay sometimes on the floor and I concentrate on my breathing for 10 minutes. Other days, my mind wanders so quickly before I even have a chance to realise I've hijacked myself. It is best to meditate at least 90 minutes after a large meal so that your body isn't trying to digest food whilst you are trying to focus your mind. Strictly speaking, no alcohol or drugs should be in your system for meditation as they stimulate your mind. I personally struggle with this a little because I tend to meditate before I go to bed but I do drink tea and coffee in the morning so I may still have some caffeine in my system. I personally haven't noticed any adverse effects in terms of my meditation practice but would probably suggest not drinking a large latte immediately before trying to meditate because instead of quieting your mind it will be buzzing. For a meditation practice, it is advisable to try to make it a habit or a ritual, so finding the best time for you each day is helpful. I personally prefer evenings just before I go to bed, but for you it may be first thing in the morning, or maybe you want to find a quiet place at each lunchtime. You need to find somewhere comfortable with no disturbances and little to no noise. Ideally, you need to be in comfortable clothing, which is why evenings or mornings may be better for you. And this is so that your mind isn't being distracted by thoughts of something being too tight or pinching around your waist, etc. Ensure your clothing matches the season. So sitting may mean you feel cooler, so especially in the cooler months, ensure you are warm enough. Again, this is so your mind isn't focusing on your physical body and comfort. Posture is also very important. If your body slumps, your mind will slump. It is a Buddhist saying. 
I would suggest sitting in an upright dining room style chair where you can put your feet flat on the floor, approximately two feet apart, and you keep your back straight without leaning back into the chair. Hold your head straight and then drop your chin about one inch, keeping your ears in line with your shoulders and your nose in a straight line to your navel. This helps remove tension out of the cervical spine area. You will be breathing through your nostrils unless you are suffering from a condition which makes this difficult, maybe such as a cold. Keep your mouth closed and place your tongue gently against the top of the mouth, touching the back for back of the top of your teeth. I would suggest removing your shoes to help ground you, but especially in cooler months, keep socks on to keep your feet warm. When practicing seated meditation, your eyes can remain open and you can have a relaxed gaze to the ground about three feet in front of you. Place your hands in your lap a few inches below your belly button. If you are right-handed, place your right hand palm up and rest your left hand palm up within your right hand with your thumbs touching to make an oval shape. If you are left-handed, rest your right hand within your left hand. Again, both hands palm up with your thumbs touching. It's important that remaining focused on your physical posture is just as important as focusing on your meditation subject. You are connecting your mind and your body through meditation and being focused on the present moment. If you are wanting to develop a meditation practice, you can access some guided meditation recordings that I've done for you at um, sites.google.com forward slash lindsayhood.net forward slash mini hyphen mindfulness hyphen course forward slash home or if you prefer a shortened url you can go to www.bit.ly forward slash two capital a five five six capital x lowercase q i will also leave these links under this video Thank you so much for your time today. Mindfulness has so many benefits for you as an individual, as well as your productivity, which will support you in your life. As well as the guided meditations I have created, apps such as Headspace and Calm are great to support a daily meditation. And magazines such as Psychologies has great articles and ideas for everyday mindfulness. Trying things and finding what works for you and bringing your attention to focus on what you are doing and feeling at this point in time is the key to living a more mindful and confident life. Today's video has given you lots of ideas you can try and develop. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye for now.